We're live. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Sam. Afternoon on my end, but good morning to you and afternoon to me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How are you? I miss your face. I miss you so much, too. I'm so glad we're, we're getting to do this this morning. Me my too. favorite time is the best time. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Hi, friends. Everyone, we've got lots of folks here already. Good morning, we everyone. Do. Hi, guys. Hi, Colleen. Hi, Pauline. Hi, Sharon and Gina and Mary <laughs> and Stephanie. <laughs> it's so good to see everybody. The Colleen. Pauline. It reminds me of, of, of the hairspray. <laughs> and I'm Jesse. <laughs> Hey, there's Jesse. Hey, hey. <sighs> All right. The bead, the bead roll called Sarah. <laughs> folks know the song I'm referencing. Otherwise, it's just gonna go. <laughs> All right. Or I'm just a crazy person over here. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> All right, so. Talk to us, Sam. Okay, first of all, I have to say, you and the whole color palette you've got going on with your whole look plus the cat, like the the shelves behind you and all the greenery, like you're just like this perfect fall palette. And I don't know if this was intentional or not, but you match this this speed box. I'm just saying. <laughs> I at least I try, I try to put some green on because. <laughs> We September was a Neelay box, and of course, a Neelay box is going to have some green in it, Sarah. I like of course, it. of course, especially his jewel tone green was like yeah. key. Yeah, so I realized I don't own enough green. I found a little bit of green, a little mm -hmm. bit of green, and then I and then I have a lot of green plants. <laughs> you do, <laughs> I'm always in awe of your plants because I can't keep plants alive at all. I don't know how they survive under the climate I give them. <laughs> <laughs> Very, like I haven't looked at some of these plants in over a week. <laughs> There's a life. <laughs> they're they're good. Like, <laughs> I like to say that they've adapted. They have. They must. They must have adapted. Yeah. The yeah. ones that have not adapted don't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I've got lots of those. <laughs> This goes into the compost. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's the update over over in, in Knoxville area? So update is let's see. It's getting cold at night, which is lovely, might I add. I'm I'm so ready. I'm so ready. And I have to talk about it because like right now it's like 90 degrees outside, which so you would think it's just same old, same old, but at mm -hmm. night it's like hoodie weather at night. And that's just like the little hint that I need to know that just around the corner, things are going to cool off a little bit. But yeah. So when I say I have lots of dead plants, I do. Mine just happen to be outside on the front porch because they're like, they're starving for water and they're all burned up because of the heat. So yeah. <laughs> outside of the weather though. <laughs> That is the big topic of discussion, at least for me, is the weather. But um, other than that, this week, so I have, um, we're doing our regular live right now. And mm -hmm. then uh, Hardwired will be meeting at 4 p.m. Eastern time this afternoon. But then that's it for me for the week. I will not have any more lives th this week because I will be teaching um, at the JTV Experience event on Thursday and Friday. So, oh, wow. um just a reminder to everybody that there will not be a feel good Friday show this week because I will be live teaching elsewhere. Um, but uh, I will be running a big sale in my Etsy shop in my absence. So that will Ooh, be fun. coming on Friday. So what about you? What's going on with you? Oh gosh. Is that, I feel like everyone I talk to right now, is just like <laughs> September madness. Um, so I think I, I think I didn't realize it, but I think I'm a little bit in that of just like, oh, there's a, there's a lot going on. And like, yeah, yeah. sometimes you have to take some extra <laughs> breaths this month. Mm -hmm. Um, so I tried to do some of that yesterday. Somehow still got like today's sale prepped and like a lot prepped for today, but like was able to take a little bit easier yesterday and try to ease into the week <laughs> as best I could. Yeah. And I'm hopeful that now the rest of the week will feel 
okay, but we shall see what is to come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got we got a live sale today. Uh, <coughs> we see, uh, evening live sale Tuesday at five o'clock Pacific, eight p.m. Eastern. Our theme today is beadbox. We, we're doing our beadbox stream right now, where Sarah's going to make a lovely bracelet, and I heard possibly some earrings. And then I'm very curious what what earrings you have envisioned. Um, so the live sales today at 5 p.m. All beadbox themes. We have extras of everything from the box. The extras from the box are actually already, already on the website. Today's sale is all about like everything else, like more kind of expanding the palette. Yeah. Of the beadbox. So we have a lot of fun with this sale. I love picking out gems to go with. And Rachel has all sorts of like gorgeous. She showed me this palette of check glasses, just so luscious, full of English cuts and pear brios. So there's just there's a lot of fun to be had on the on the Tuesday yeah. live sale. And then we have two classes with Neely this week, Wednesday and Friday. It's so exciting. There and so yeah, because he has some designs, of course, planned with the uh, with the beadbox. Yeah, our collaboration with Neela. We've got so now is your January, our first collab box, and we've also gotten to do Danielle mm-hmm. and Neela. And I really hope I'm not forgetting anyone, but I don't think I am. Rachel and Rachel Malice. Oh my goodness! Yeah, we've done four this four this year. Yeah, yeah, it's been so cool. To, like I think it's really made a shift for the for the box. Oh my god, I also wonder that was so cool. They're like each each one was such a different went such yeah. a different direction because of the design eye of each person involved. So of course Neela has such a distinct like style and design. Like when you see a Neela design, you're like, you know it's a Neela design. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And of course he uses silver silk and everything and which is gorgeous. I had to wear some silver silk today. One of my this is some capture chain. Um, we put some pipe chain in the box and some cord ends to go with it so yeah. shall we take a look at the box Sarah? yes let's do it let's do it all right so i'm gonna let you kind of um walk us through as i show perfect yeah Ooh, right. i love your table i love your desk that ooh, dark wood <gasps> Please, <laughs> i know we, it's much we prettier unboxed, the, only, the only problem we is that on it? you want to do that let's move this because this this box you know, has some wooden elements in it. I know, I know it does. All right, yeah. So let's let me move all this out of the you know wood desk. I do. It's just that it has a tendency to see the glare. The glare drives mm-hmm. me crazy. So that's why I don't normally do oh, anything no, on yeah. just the wooden desk here. But all this right, all real. right. It's okay. So pretty. So I know I need some trays. I saw where you and Shira were tray shopping and I'm like, I need to go tray shopping so bad. Ross is pretty good trays. Ross and Daiso are my go-tos. I've got to get, I've got to get some trays. So let's talk about the silver silk right out of the gate, shall we? Because this is most definitely an Elay box and we can't, we can't talk about an Elay box without talking about the pipe chain that's in here. So this is really, really pretty. He, did he custom this for this box or was this one that he has on a regular kind of basis? This one we definitely custom designed with him to match the box. So we did a, a brown tubing with a golden wire. A lot of his current pipe chains, they're like more monochromatic. Yeah. That he carries on a, like a regular basis and they're beautiful. And usually when we, when we make a custom one with him, we try to do more color combinations. Yeah. Because it really gives us so much opportunity for, to kind of create some different feels. So each month we all, we always design one or two pipe chains with him. And so this is one of the ones we designed designed for this month. We designed a few and picked out one of them to go in the box. Yeah, it's actually, a piece of the process I haven't we haven't talked about yet. And because we wanted to see like which one really stands out as like our winner that will like design up really nicely with everything in the box. Yeah, the mixed metals and some of the wood tones made this one feel like the right complement to everything that we're about to show. Right, right. And this one comes with uh, the cord ends. Which I think was really nice. You added what six? Are there six cordons? Or yeah, there's six yeah. cordons. The idea being that you could do like two, hopefully about two projects with the, just with the box without having to buy any more. Right. Um, so these one, these are these are some cordons that we had manufactured at the shop. Um, Neely also carries like his own like 
official ones that you can get from his website, silversilkonline.com. Right. And of course, the pipe chain is made by Nile. Literally, it's just Nile and his fancy machine that creates this. <laughs> his fancy, Nile and his fancy machine. I love that. <laughs> I love it. I just, if you guys ever wonder what the silver silk operation looks like, it's Nile. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> and he has a full-time job already. I we I don't know how he does it. I know. I don't either. I've often wondered how it is that he manages to do it all, but he does somehow. So I wanted to point out, guys, that I only pulled this little piece out of the bag. That's because I have the rest of it that we're going to use in our bracelet. So you definitely get a lot of this. Just know that I had already cut some of it off. So it's not just this little, this little tiny piece. <laughs> just so everybody is aware. <laughs> Ooh, Colleen oh, yeah, has yeah. Um, our link for us and Sarah's code. So I just put that on the on the screen. So if you want to join uh, Sam's Bead Box, if you subscribe today, you would get the October box as your first box, which is gorgeous. You can I go do. to samsbeadbox.com or to the link that I that is there on the screen. They both go to the same place. And then <laughs> code, just her name, gets you $5 off your first box. Indeed it does. Don't forget to use that because that's a good one. That's a good one. That's like a, that's a, that's a big deal. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So talk to me because I don't have the little, the little insert. Talk to me about this color palette and kind of how this one all came to be. And I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to be showing as we go, but kind of give us what what Nile's direction was for this one like where he was what he was yeah, thinking absolutely. so the theme of the box is mid-century style we are super inspired especially by mid-century furniture which i think is kind of one of the main lasting elements of the era yeah you can still purchase mid-century style furniture and that's all about clean lines and there's some very specific colors of the air, especially some some jewel tone greens. Um, you've also got some organic influences. So we can tr introduce some wood tones. If you want to see, folks, if you do want to take the full write-up from Nile, that is on the website, um, on the inserts. If you go to the first link, I believe, of this video, we, I, we have the link, the the insert uploaded and then on the same page you can shop the extras from the box you can get a whole box if you want one so sarah's got a bunch of our strands here we've got two of our wood strands mm -hmm. so we've got the rosewood first so the rounds and then the tubes are a uh, wenji wood which is like a beautiful african hardwood they really are really really nice and like, I, especially that tube shape, I find like just quite appealing. Like I've already, I've been eyeing that for maybe it's like, I can't quite tell some sort of bracelet design for myself. I just like, oh yeah, yeah. What yeah. elements this box that would lend really nicely if you wanted to make some men's jewelry as well? Yeah, I like these. I think these are really, really interesting. This. Do you like a melon? I do. Well, I always <laughs> love a melon, of course. But I love this color. So this is what's kind of like a honey brown in there almost. I thought it was red at first glance, but it's not. It's like a it's like a wood brown, but then it has this amazing wash over the top of it that gives it such crazy texture, which yeah, I think is really cool. It almost like remind me of like a root beer tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was perfect. Yeah, it does. It's very much a root beer brown, which is really awesome. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Those English cuts you have there are probably one of my mm -hmm. favorites. Those Mine are, too. It's our first time we've done 10 millimeter English cuts. And like, this is the color, the green color we wanted in the box. This is this perfect emerald jewel green. And yeah. I think it, it feels so elegant in this. And it has the same finish as actually those fire polish you have on your screen. Yep. Is that it has this, this kind of golden bronzy finish that makes it just have that little bit of extra elevation. Yep. So, so those, pretty. Those are designed to match. And then the other two strands that are designed to match are the gold lined fire polish in eight millimeter <laughs> and four millimeter. Yep. Which Sarah's already broken into. <laughs> Couldn't to. help it. Those were so pretty. They're so, so pretty. And I, I had a hard time choosing. Fave. 
Yeah, I had a hard time choosing which size I wanted to use. And ultimately, I went with the smaller ones because I thought that these would make really nice, like, matching elements if you wanted to mm -hmm. do. Because we're doing a bracelet today, guys. For those of you who who don't, who missed that part, we are definitely going to do a bracelet. And I, I was thinking maybe I would do something extra if we had time, like, to do a quick little pair of earrings to go with it. So that's kind of what I was thinking with these. I was thinking I would do the bracelet with these and then use these as maybe the earrings. I'm not real sure, though. Um, but this was one of my favorite beads in the box for sure. Yes. They're so pretty. They're so elegant. Like I'm going to need 12 strands of those. <laughs> and then a strand that I, I definitely used uh, was the Malachite. So this one comes in a strand form too, right? I, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah. This one is a wood Jasper. Oh, wood Jasper. My bad. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> you're all good. So it's a, I know why you say Malachite. So it's a wood jasper, which has like the beautiful natural banding in it. Yeah. Similar to malachite. So what they have done is they dyed it green. Oh, gosh. The it's bone of malachite. So it's basically an imitation malachite. And it's spot on too. I mean, it's, it's, if you, if you didn't know any better, like me, you would think that that's malachite because it's, it's spot on. It's absolutely beautiful. It's pretty, it's pretty close. Like if you put them side by side, you'll notice like Mac is a little bit deeper hue, a little bit more shine. Yeah. Um, but to build it, but it's also very pricey for a nice malachite of this color. So it was, we really wanted to, it was when we were talking about what stones we could do, this one we found and Neela like fell in love with it instantly. Yeah. It's really beautiful. That's awesome. Wow, I learned something new today. <laughs> I love that. All right, so there's lots of other, there's, let's see. Hold on, let me, let me flip like these over. Fingers. What do you want to take a look at? I'm not sure what I want to look. There's so much, there's so much fun here. Okay, I think I want to, I think we, I want to talk about this, this Jasper Square, because this is one of my other favorite things in the box that just really, really needs a necklace built around it because it's just beautiful this is our kumbaba jasper and it's just it's, it's always been one of my favorite stones with this mix of green and black mm -hmm. and like the formate everyone's pennant is gonna look totally different because it has these gorgeous natural formations yeah that i believe are, i think are believed to come from like fossil formations old like really old fossil formations was so pretty. There's, I don't have anything in my collection that looks like this. So I was immediately drawn to this. I, and like I said, I, I, it needs a necklace. I just don't know what the, the design is going to be, but it's going to be something amazing because the, it, it definitely deserves a really special piece built around it for sure. Yeah. So pretty. And but you know, um, go ahead. You could, you could quite literally just put this on a piece of black leather and it would be amazing. Yeah, I think so. Mm. I love Tucson it. comes full circle with that one because we actually met the cutter in Tucson yeah. in in January February. Yeah, and we're talking. I was like, "What? Oh, you cut your own stones? Like, what sort of custom production do you do?" And so he cut this pendant for us for the box. Wow, it's so special and pretty. Neely very it. specifically wanted the square. He, yeah. he fell in love with the square version of it. All right. Another one of my favorite things is the brios that are in here. And I, I'm always kind of drawn to the luster brios. You've had some other brios in previous boxes that mm -hmm. I also fall in love with. And I'm not, I'm not sure if it's the shape that I love or if it is the ones that you pick out specifically, but this box <laughs> hit both of them because once upon a time, you did another box that had the table cut on one side, but then it was like this different kind of finish around the edges. And I adored those. And then you had another Brio that had the luster and I adored those too. So you got both <laughs> going on in this box and I don't really know what to do with myself because I love them. <laughs> Terrors are fun. I, I love it having a top drilled bead option. I find them very helpful for earrings. And you'll see we did a bunch of earring pairs in this box yeah. that we can, Gosh, we can go through. I, I'm in love with those. I really, really am. But then the table cut is, there's just something so magical about it only having that table cut on one side. That's mm -hmm. what gets me is that it's gorgeous on both sides and you get both the smooth element 
of the rounded bead itself, but then you get this table cut finish that is just like, it's a, it's a mirror shine. I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm obsessed, obsessed. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> I love those. I really do. I think these are really, really special beads. And I, again, I always kind of get excited with a Brio type bead, but there's something just really kind of different about the luster and then the table cut that I, I was really excited to get both in this box. So well done. <laughs> You well, made Sarah very the end, we might challenge you to make some earrings <laughs> for sure like i want to use these I'm, and i'm like i'm like hmm shall do these should i put those together Ooh, yes. shall. oh I think wow I, might need to. You yeah. shall. I kind of love that kind of love that okay so you were talking about more pairs there are mm -hmm. lots of other pairs in here for earrings so let's take a look at some of them i also love these this is a bead that I consider this a Sam bead. I know it's not really a Sam bead, but my first experience with this design was through you. So for me, officially from now until the end of time, this is a Sam bead. So <laughs> yeah, we got our deco fan and the fire polish drops there in that nice large size. Mm -hmm. They're so exciting. A few more of our jet black elements. These would make cool earrings. Like, well, okay. Well, I would just like together. Just together, yeah. I think that would be a cool earring. It's a very deco. It's those beads. It's the deco beads. I just can't get enough of those. They're so fun. They're really, really cool. And I think you could probably do it in either direction if you wanted to. I think I like it better the other way. But they're so cute. I love those. Love those. Those are very classy. Like, makes me feel like the great Gatsby. <laughs> <clears throat> I know, tying a little bit of like even a little previous era, design era in there mm -hmm. with the Deco fans. These are also really awesome. This is one of my favorites. We got these cool laser etched octagon, or no, they're hexagons. They're so, I think they're so cool. And like, I wanted that little bit of extra, like something, we always try to find a little something different for each box. Yeah. Something those a little more so unexpected. And I thought this was like fun uh, styling for this design, design period. Yeah, I love those. Those are so fun. Another one of my favorites. I always, always, always love a coin bead. And these are just beautiful. And we did a mixed set of five, five totally different colors. That of, of these lentils. Green. It's hard to see with this background, but that is a deep, it's that green that you see. Every, gosh, it's so pretty too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, one I of them has the part. silver, one of them has the gold wash. Yeah, and I think there's like some slight variants in the sets, but like they're basically all within this color palette. And a, and like my favorite one's that honey one on the top left. Mm -hmm. This one, yeah, mm -hmm. love that. These are going to make great focals for necklaces and bracelets. They're and my dream is so just nice. the five of them as a, as a set <gasps> together. As a oh, yeah. Oh, you have to do that. Have you done that yet? I have not done that yet. You need to do that because, yeah, 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 yeah. So pretty. I love those. Those are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. We've got some more little babies here. We, we just kept adding beads to this box. So we've got, like, we wanted some more focals. So we added these big, long diamonds in crystal and a green one. And then two pairs of a new shape. We were trying out so you guys can let us know what you think of this shape this geo oval it's more geometric styled oval it's this very one cool also finish and then we've also got a, a kind of a lighter green crystal one so They're if very you, pretty if you like that shape definitely let us know because we're 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 kind of experimenting with it here i do like that shape i think that's very very really cool all right we, gosh this box has got so much stuff in it all right, Something this, we able to squeeze a lot into this one. Yeah, this one is amazing. Wow. Isn't that cool? This is a new shape for the box. This is our mosaic oval. I love and that. It has this beautiful floral design. And can anyone kind of figure out what kind of flower it is? I'm not sure I'm even holding it the correct direction. I think that's right. I mean, what's kind of the cool thing with the mosaic design? That's just like... It, it looks good anyway. It does. It really does. Oh, I think that's so cool. So what is what is the flower? 
Oh, I don't know. I was asking folks. Oh, yeah, no, I think this was like, a, like I'm on trial here. What kind of flower is that? Uh, I'm, that was a I don't know. Question for it's fabulous, whatever it is. <laughs> I love, love, love. So pretty. And we have some more wooden elements in here, which is also really cool. These are, these are fun. Yeah, we got two of these coin focals, which I just think they're so cool. Yeah, I really love those. I think those Mille are is using one of his layered on top of the <gasps> That's what I was thinking too. Yeah, to layer them together, you could do all kinds of cool things. I, then, one of my, my favorite things about them is, is that they're lightweight. Mm -hmm. I don't think wooden beads get nearly enough love. And you can really layer on tons and tons of wood. And it feels like you're not wearing anything. So I feel like we need we need more wood in our design lives for sure. These are really nice. So pretty. <laughs> One says, we need Jesse for flower identification. <laughs> <laughs> these are gorgeous how many more this beads a, do we have in this box this just keeps going this is another one of my favorites because of the color here so these are these are agate they're, yeah they're a dyed green agate they're kind of a similar tone to like a green onyx here yeah they're really nice really really beautiful and we really liked the the star cut we're really trying to find the elements that contributed that some of those sleek lines yeah light like kind of subtle design extra somethings for the mid-century idea hmm. okay. i like seeing your your, your brains <laughs> turning sarah i just have to just gotta see gotta see not sure not sure about that at all i i love the color of those that's so beautiful these are really pretty too Oh my gosh, there's, I'm forgetting all these, some of my favorites. These are a turbine bead, which is a Czech glass specialty that I've always loved. And this is kind of in a little bigger size. It comes with a few different types of turbines. This one's yeah. really cool. I love it this is, green. Yeah, I do too. It's a really, really cool bead for sure. <laughs> all right, I've got four more bags to go through. This is like a really big box. <laughs> I think I think that would help because often wooden elements cost a little less. So I think we're able to squeeze a little bit more into this box. Yeah. Well, we got you got the fire more fire polish. We got some kind of mixed green emerald toned fire polish. Yes. yes, yes. I love, 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 love these. And then what do you think of our our chonk our chonkers? I think they're pretty fabulous too. <laughs> I personally <laughs> adore jumbo fire polish. Yeah, they're they're fabulous and fun and could make amazing earrings with for sure or focals and something else i always i'm like ooh, big earrings yes please give me big earrings but <laughs> so sad to me, like, i was like you, they could be earrings <laughs> so pretty all right we've got three more things to go through what? These are... <laughs> i know what you i don't you you did it you did it <laughs> All right, check these out. These are bronze and hematite colored. And how how fun is that? Like, I need more bronze and hematite mix. Mm -hmm. It's they came just up. so cool. This is when we were kind of at a fork in the road with the when we were designing the box, where we liked both of these metallic tones. Mm -hmm. And then we ultimately saw it as an opportunity to actually embrace both, to have to add yeah. more of this mixed metal element. So you have your gold, your hematite and bronze as the main metals. And there's even some kind of touches of silver as well. Yeah. I, I, I want, they, they must, they must, simply must be <laughs> a necklace. There is a project for future me having these as in a necklace alternate. Oh, I'm so in love. I'm so in love. There's two of my favorites. The hematite color is one of my absolute favorite things to use in the fall and the winter. Uh, mm. I feel like sometimes it can be a little bit too dark in the spring and the summer, but the fall really kind of lends itself to that kind of darker, kind of mysterious. It's almost magical. And then the bronze is one of those fantastic neutrals that has just the right amount of sparkle for people who don't like over the top 
you know, mm. don't don't like that kind of over the top shimmery shine, but still want that kind of flashiness. That, yeah, that yes. metallic touch. Yep. They're absolutely beautiful and they they simply must be a necklace. Yeah, that's a mission <laughs> to the box too, and I think it's one of my favorites. It's so elegant. Yeah. They're just beautiful. I I immediately, immediately inspired there by those for sure. And we've got two more things. So we've got some more of the hematite. Yeah, so which, this is another new shape for the box. Yeah, these are super cool. I love that these are drilled in the middle. So these kind of lend themselves to a lot of different mm -hmm. things. You could do so much with these. You can use these as spacers. You could use them front facing as, you know, like a focal for an earring drop or anything. Like they're so fun. Yeah, these are these are cool. There's like also maintain a little bit of that hexagon idea. Mm -hmm. uh, when you do stack them, they're like they're made to be a flower basically but when you stack yeah. them they have a look more of like a like a hex nut oh they do which, which i think is like kind of amazing because like I think i'm always looking for a nice another thing i can stack for like earrings and things like you got your, yeah. hishi, you got your square hishi but do you have a like a hex hishi yeah that's cool those are really now, fun. now i wish we had named them hex hishi because that's kind of what they look like yeah those are awesome i love those and then last but not least are our little pebble chips. And this is a, such a fun shape. You got the green lusters. Yeah, so we, you got to have, we could try to have a few spacer box, spacers each, each box. So we had the Oops. four millimeter fire polish. We have these guys. I'm sure there's another one I'm forgetting. And this just kind of gives a little bit more of that organic touch because of that free form style of yeah. them. They're so cool. I really when I say like freeform and check loss, they're all the same shape, but they're the the shape itself is more of a freeformness. Right. <laughs> I got you. I got you. So that's it. That's the box, and that was a, that's a lot. I mean, well, now that I've moved everything out of the way, I can't see it all. But um, this box was just chocked full. No, that's not it. I'm sorry. There was one more, but I had used these in dangles, so we didn't get to talk about these little guys. So there's um some those are our baby english cuts in that same bronze finish mm -hmm, mm -hmm, which i'm I, obviously already loving loved. what you're doing with them there I mean, <laughs> wait, we gotta start we gotta start bracelet it oh my god we goodness. do we do we do i'm gonna put these back in this bag so that i don't lose them because i've already lost one to the carpet so i'll have to <gasps> just save it here in a minute but uh almost almost got them all okay so I am, I'm going to put together just, I'm, I kind of wanted to keep it really kind of straightforward with this because <clears throat> number one, I couldn't decide what I liked the most. It was hard, right? It's, it was really difficult to pick like what, what was my favorite thing, but I knew that I wanted to be sure and use the pipe chain because I, you can't do an Elay box and not use the pipe chain in your very first design out of the box. I mean, that just okay. kind of seems like that's, that's what you're supposed to do. Right. So I did want to keep it fairly simple and straightforward and just do a memory wire design because I very rarely actually grab for memory wire and I forget how versatile memory wire can be and how, easy it can be this is a memory wire is a great like stepping stone for people who are just now kind of getting into and falling in love with jewelry making memory wire is fantastic because it maintains its shape obviously uh that's why it's called memory wire and you don't have to you don't have to have a whole lot of tools to work with this a pair of round nose pliers is pretty much all you're going to need to finish off your ends though there are some specialty findings that you can glue on the ends and things like that but if you're just keeping it simple round nose pliers is really all you're going to need and a really good pair of cutters because obviously we don't want to cut these with anything other than a heavy duty kind of cutter tool but because it is this like shape that is is going to maintain itself, you can cut these links and use them for other things. If you needed just like a half round shape or if you wanted like a whole, I don't know, just a whole half of that for something, you can cut it and use this as the base of other things, which is really nice. And again, if you're just beginning in jewelry making and you don't 
you don't quite have the skill set yet to form your own components and you know you're not quite comfortable with work hardening and stuff the memory wire because it's that tempered steel it's already ready for you so you don't have to worry that you're going to lose that shape which is really really nice but it's also such an easy way to create multi-strand uh, designs, particularly bracelets. So it's always yes. a favorite of mine, but I never grab it. And I don't know why, but I thought the pipe chain was the perfect pipe chain and memory wire. They just kind of made to go together, you know? Memory wire is my go-to if I ever want to teach someone a, a like a quick win project in jewelry making. Yes. Because all we have to do is make two simple loops and like they can do everything from there. Yep. Yeah. It's a great way to fall in love with jewelry. If you've not quite done that yet, you know what I mean? And jewelry making is, I don't, when I think about just like you, somebody who's never made anything before, this is a great way to introduce them without overwhelming them with technique. So yeah. Memory wire. Um, yeah, I feel it lowers like that barrier of entry where you can still get to, because I think the, a lot of the fun in jewelry making is getting to focus on design. Yeah, 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 and yeah. And so if you can lower the barrier of entry of like not having to learn the crimp technique right at the start, yeah. that's really nice. Oh, for sure. For sure. So just in case you guys are curious um, about more really cool things you can do with memory wire, Meredith Roddy has made some really awesome memory wire designs. She really loves memory wire. So if you ever need like some inspiration with memory wire, go check her out because she does some things with memory wire where you actually use findings with it as well. Whereas I usually just kind of stick with the basics and just make my loops on the end, which I'm about to do here. But if you're looking for like upping your memory wire game, I definitely would check out some of her memory wire designs because she's really good at like thinking outside the box with memory wire. So there's a lot that's possible with it. I'm going to use just my round nose pliers for this. However, I do want to mention that there are, in fact, memory wire finishing pliers that exist that are specifically made uh, for finishing the ends of your memory wire. And they're just a little bit smaller. You've got two size options and they're not tapered so that those loops are going to be consistent every single time. Not a tool that you absolutely have to have, but definitely a good one. If you think you're going to do a lot of memory wire work uh, in your future, you might want to grab some of those. But for me, I'm just going to stick with the round nose pliers because that's what most people have on hand. And oh. You're going to make your loop at the end. So you definitely want to start out with a loop on one end so you don't lose your beads. Uh, I like to roll mine inwards. Some people like to roll outwards. I don't think it makes any difference, to be honest with you. Um, and I also like to double my my loop. I forgot that you do that. That is such a perfect... It actually makes it look so much nicer. Well, what ends up happening... Part of the reason that I I used to for the longest time not use memory wire i still don't grab it very often now like i was mentioning but part of the reason that i didn't like to use memory wire much was because i would be fine with the first loop right i would string on my entire design and i would get to the end and then there was this whole challenge about okay where do i stop the last bead versus how much wire do i need to make a loop and that can be enough to turn somebody away from something. And as mm. simple as that, that choice might be to some people, that can be a real quandary to other people. So for me, doubling up the loop means, you know what? It doesn't matter how much wire I have left over. I don't have to pre-measure. I can just wrap and wrap and wrap until I have two loops and then just trim off the excess. So it kind of took the pressure off of me. And I'll show you what I mean when we get to the end. But yeah. just for those of you who are kind of curious about, you know, well, how do you measure out your design and how do you know how much wire you need for those loops? If you double the loops over or even triple the loops over, you don't have to worry about it. All you know is that you're just going to wind down until you get to the beads and then just trim off the rest. So that, that helps, right? Okay. So I'm going to use some of these beautiful greens and I'm just going to thread those on. I saw someone asking about oval memory wire and I checked the shop. Looks like we have it. Our, looks like all of our memory wire is in stock right now. We have the oval memory wire and we have lots of silver and gold memory wire options. I've actually, I haven't seen that bronzy one you have there it's beautiful i don't even know where this came from to be honest with you i just happened to find it um as i was I assume it's a beetle on item it's like digging it's, through they, they do a lot of memory wire things they do i don't i don't 
don't know if this is one of theirs or not, though. To be, I, I would love to give them credit for it, but I honestly, I don't even know where it came from. It was just kind of stuck in with some of my other wires, and I was like, ooh, that bronze color is the perfect metal for this box. So that's what I went with, but... I think you've got a lot of us inspired with that double loop technique because I think it, I've always wanted the end of my memory where it would look a little nicer. Yeah. Have a little bit more kind of, I can trust in it a little bit more. Exactly. That's, that's another thing about doubling that loop over is it definitely, you don't have to worry that anything is going to sneak out on you. You know, sometimes that, that one little loop, it's very much like a, like an eye pin, you know, and sometimes those can open up on you and the smallest little beads can slip into that space. And before you know it, you've got it hooked on something else, you know, your clothing or anything else. That's always a worry. I dropped one of these in the floor. I don't know what's up with me today. <laughs> I just keep <laughs> dropping things in the floor. I'm going to have to see if I can grab it here in just a second. So, What's cool about memory wire is that there aren't any rules. I do find that there are some designers out there who have this whole formula for memory wire, but I don't want you guys to be scared away by that. A lot of times for me, if I'm going to do color blocking with memory wire, what I'll do is make sure that I have one full round of something. This one is one bead short because I dropped one in the floor, but one full round of something gives nice color blocking. However, you have to remember that even if it looks like that um, off of the off of your body doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to lay that way once you put it on um, because everybody's wrist sizes are a little bit different. So just because it's a perfect ring of green here now doesn't mean that it's actually going to be that way when you put it on. So. <laughs> That's why for me, I don't, I don't really stick with any formulas. You know, I do with the color blocking as far as just one ring around. But like I said, once you put that on, it might be different. It might not look exactly the same. So just keep those kinds of things in mind. But if you're doing bead soup, which is one of my favorite things to do on memory wire, you don't have to worry about any of that. Okay. So now that I have my ring of green, I'm going to put my pipe chain in and I'm going to thread on one of the cord ends so that when I thread my pipe chain onto the memory wire, it's going to slide right into that cord end. So that's going to sit right there and it'll be ready for the pipe chain to come on. And the pipe chain in the memory wire, the pipe chain, of course, has that nice little hole. It still takes a little bit of finessing to get it onto the memory wire. So it doesn't slide perfectly. Some of it has to do with the finish that's on my memory wire. Mine's not a particularly slippery memory wire. <laughs> uh, but it will go on there. It just takes a little, a little extra. Gina, Ginger says... I use my cat to find my dropped beads. <laughs> <laughs> I do that too. <laughs> I do that myself. <clears throat> All right. So just a little wiggling here. I can't believe you're not making something. It's weird for me to be making something and you not also making it. No, I was thinking about that this morning. I didn't have quite the time to get to the office. That's where I keep like all my tools these days. Yeah. I know I've, well, our last bunch of lives we've done for the bead box, we've both been making with it. I It's kind of a nice change of pace. Honestly, I feel like a lot more relaxed that I could, that I'm just like <laughs> rolling up <laughs> on camera and like, I just get to like, uh -huh. I'm just enjoying <laughs> sticking in the comments here and watching what you're doing and hanging with you. Like, I don't know. I'm having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I've got it on to the memory wire and now I'm just kind of coaxing it down. Like I said, this is not particularly slippery memory wire. So I am just kind of pushing with my fingers and pulling with the pliers to work this down. It's not hard. It's just a little, a little tedious. That's all. But you're almost there. Yeah, I'm really close. <laughs> all right. So what I want is I want to be sure that it goes right into that end cap. 
that I don't miss, you know, because then once you get other beads on there, it's kind of hard to fix it. So just be sure that you get it right into the end cap. And then I'm going to thread on another end cap. Yeah, so we had these ones made for the shop just because we carry so much of the pipe chain and we wanted to make sure that we had findings to go with it. Um, so we have these, I think, in four finishes right now and we're working on getting, uh, I think, at least one, one or two more, I believe. They're really nice. I like them a lot and they're easy to work with if you wanted to use other wires your german style wires or artistic wires or whatever to run through your pipe chain i like that hole on the end there so that you can do like a wrapped loop or you can thread your bead stringing wire through there it's just really nice finding to have i find it is that kind of needed finishing piece for the pipe chain yeah it helps it from fraying over time um, yeah. it also just gives it that like finished look that i think like of course we all want in our designs so now I'm transitioning to those gold lined. I love those so much. This is such a nice, this is, this actually, you know, if you had shown me this bracelet, especially without the dangles, I would have been like, oh, Nila, it's a Nila bracelet, right? Right. <laughs> exactly. And I think, and then the, the little bonus surprise dangles you've got coming, that's, that's uh, a Sarah, <laughs> a Sarah, um, a Sarah special, marker. a Sarah special and a, uh, a little clue. <laughs> yeah. I always got to have the dangles and things. I just can't help myself. And I'm really smitten right now with dangles made of tiny beads. So these, <laughs> this was like exactly what I wanted. <laughs> and I made humongous clusters like I did with, um, what other design I did with you not too long ago? I think it was the last bead box, wasn't it? Where I made clusters like that i can't remember but I, they're I one of my so. favorites yeah i love them so much oh yeah on the coffee box um you definitely <gasps> did i did a bunch yeah. of dangles oh i loved that coffee box too so cool all like of your boxes you are through, fabulous i love that you go through different types of dangle eras <laughs> <laughs> like you're always going to use a dangle but what kind of dangle? Right. Yeah. Beads, where where is the dangle going? Is it <laughs> one bead dangling or is it 40? <laughs> yeah, right now I'm in the tiny beads and more is better. <laughs> as many as possible. Give me all of the The thing is is that what what I think is the coolest part other than the fact that they just look awesome is that mm -hmm. it means that I get to sit and make all of those wrapped loops and I love making wrapped loops. I, I love a wrapped loop. <laughs> and if you need the practice, Sarah's uh Sarah's got the project for you today. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Got all those little clusters to put together. All right. So, get to the end of my gold lined beads here just got a few more to go and <clears throat> we'll talk about that whole little situation at the end to measure or not to measure that is the question and i have chosen not to measure because i don't have time for that in my life <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't have time to measure we don't do that here are you roughly doing basically one loop of each design element here? Yes, yes. One loop of each. And it was pretty, it was pretty close with each, with each element. So yeah, you've got a full, a full loop of both. Uh-oh, I need to, I need to wiggle that down a little bit. Caution while wiggling. Sometimes yeah. I'll be wiggling and then I'll lose, I'll, I'll won't have mm -hmm. I'll forgotten my end. And then while wiggling, I a whole spiral of beads falls off. Yep. I'm really trying to keep that from happening. Okay, there we go. Okay. Are we good now? We're good now. No spaces. I do have a little bit of the mesh on the pipe chain sneaking out of my end cap though. So. Be sure that I fix all of that. Okay. 
All right. So yeah, I've got a strand of each. So I've got the green, the pipe chain, and then the gold lined check. And you can see I've got a ton of memory wire left over. I don't need all of that. So I am going to cut some of this off, but I'm not going to measure for a single loop because I always get the measurement wrong right? There's no like, it's not like with a regular loop and you're like a fourth of an inch is all you need to roll back. Sometimes that doesn't work with memory wire. I don't really know why. I think it has to do with the beads pushing. I'm not real sure what the, what the reasoning is, but for me, I just don't want to deal with the hassle of that. So instead what I do, I'm going to cut a little bit more of that off, is I just roll either direction frontwards backwards makes no difference and all i'm going to do is just, i'm just going to roll down to the beads and it takes however much wire it takes for me i'm lucky it only took two but if it took three or four you know if i had three or four loops i just cut two of them off mm -hmm. so that i still had the double but it, oh that's it, smart it, it why, takes why does the that pressure. make so much sense sarah oh my gosh it takes the pressure off of, oh, do I have enough wire? Do I not have enough wire? How much wire do I leave behind before I make that single loop? Forget about it. Make as many loops as you need. If it's three, if it's four, whatever, just cut two of them off and you've still got a double on the ends and it's good to go. I just, I don't want to make it more complicated than it needs to be. Oh, that's so, so logical. Yeah, just takes the pressure off, you know? <laughs> kind of pressure in my life with just simple stringing so <laughs> solve that made, problem you just made life make sense <laughs> i'm glad good yay <laughs> okay now as far as my dangle is concerned you guys have seen me make these a million times so that's why i didn't take this apart um to redo it but i will kind of talk you through it for those of you who maybe haven't seen me make these dangles before but basically all this is is a little chain of jump rings. You can see the core of this is four millimeter jump rings. And it is a jump ring with a bead on either side. And as you go down, right, the, the jump rings alternate directions, but you want to be sure that there's always one bead on either side. So that's going to hang nice and balanced. So when you get it finished, you've got a little cluster here. And at the end, I always have just a single bead at the end. However, you can make clusters however you want to. Let me show you, first of all, before I get, before I sit this one down and lose the jump ring, I'm going to attach this. And then before I attach the second one, I'll show you. I'm just going to thread that onto the loop on the end of my memory wire and close that back. So I've got a little, a little dangle for the end there. I'm going to attach this one, but I wanted to show you another cluster because when I say they don't have to be the same, they don't. So this was some garnets. And instead of, <laughs> instead of doing just one bead per, you know, thing, I did four. So it's four garnets. Oh and instead of it being one on on either side of the jump ring, it's two. So you've got two sticks of garnets on either side. So it's still the same concept. It's the the core is jump rings, but then it's a little bit longer. This makes it more of like tassel territory. This That's takes it from cluster cool. to more full like a cluster or I'm sorry like a tassel so you literally can make your dangles you know any kind of cluster you want with as many beads as you want the fuller you know the more beads you use obviously the fuller it's going to be and then wow. if you make them long like that it kind of gives it a totally different but is that not yummy look at all those bro what <laughs> is that not fabulous like this is one of my fa I have this hanging this is one of my inspiration pieces that's just hanging here that I can always kind of look at because of those amazing garnets with those tiny little facets. Yeah, that's a yummy piece. But is this yeah, a class you've already taught? Uh, I, yeah, I did this for one of my um, JTV Master Maker classes. Wow. Yeah, so this that... was a while ago, but uh, yeah, I have to keep it on hand so I can see it. It was a mesh bead that I covered with those garnets. That's so underneath cool. there is just a, it's just a metal bead. And then I made the, yeah. Oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. But that's why I'm obsessed, right? It's sparkly and fun. 
and it can be full or it can be not so full and these little english cuts were just the thing i needed to make all of yeah. these little dangles so the problem is is that once you put it down it's you have to find the end this is the end because it just has one so i know the the connection side is on this end because there's two beads can folks find the replays for that? Is like, is that on like their YouTube? I think so. I, I know that I tell everybody that you can come back and watch it as a video on demand, but I'll be completely honest with you. I'm not sure where those videos live. Um, Nicole might know. I don't know for sure. Part of the reason that I don't know is not because I shouldn't, I'm not because I'm not a fan, it's just because I don't like to watch myself. So I have no reason to go find it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> can never watch myself so i don't know where the replays of those are but so just on either end i've added those dangles now obviously you don't have to do that and i realize that those dangles that's a lot for somebody who maybe sits and types or writes all day um but if you're going out and you just want something fun those really pretty little clusters for the back of your three strand bracelet right how Way easy cool. to make a multi-strand bracelet with memory wire i mean it's it's super quick and easy that's super fun love 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 how much time do we have oh we're right at the end we're right at the end because i really was going to put together a quick little pair of earrings and I'm, i don't know that we necessarily have a whole lot of time for that but i wanted to use these so badly Maybe I'll put one. I can do one. Let's do one. Just so Yay. that. Yeah. <laughs> just so that we have something to go with it. Cause I oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. I'm gonna grab some wire here. All right. Grab a little bit of wire so that I can wire wrap my brio. So I'm going to thread that on. <laughs> do it. Do it. <laughs> Make the <laughs> earrings. I, you ask and you shall receive. All right. So I've cut my wire. I, I usually do mine off centered so that I have a short wire and a long wire. I'm going to take the wire and bend it so that it goes up, travels along the edge of that bead. And then I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. So I'm going to bend it so that it kind of travels that natural path of the bead and what you end up with is your little crisscross of your wires here. You've got a short wire and a long wire. I'm gonna take the long wire and I'm gonna bend it straight up and down and I'm gonna take the shorter wire and just bend it slightly so that it is going outwards so that I have essentially a little L shape here. Then I'm gonna come in with my bent chain nose pliers and hold on to that little crisscross section. And I'm gonna use the short wire to wrap around the longer wire and I'm actually only going to wrap twice and I'm going to trim that off and then I'm going to thread on my fire polish. This is right like my favorite style of earring. I love stacking right onto a brio wrap. Yeah. And they're so simple, but they're so beautiful. You know, there's like, you can't go wrong with that. You just can't. And then I'm just going to do a wrapped loop. Thank you, Carmen, for using super stickers. We appreciate you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And I'm just going to do a wrapped loop. And tidy that up a little bit. And then come in with my cutter and trim off. And I need an ear wire. And I did those so quick, I think I can do both. We'll do both. So we have an actual set. We must have both. <laughs> they're so perfect. How They're so perfect, even just with two beads. I know. Well, it's because you you pick out the best beads. You and Nile this time picked out the best beads. I mean, they're just beautiful. You don't have to... You don't have to make anything crazy. They're just gorgeous by themselves. Quite honestly, just one of these with an ear wire would be an amazing <laughs> pair of earrings. I agree. 
I'm so glad you're using the, those more of the gold beads to match the bracelet. It's like yes. so that's exactly why we love to do some of those matching ideas in the box. In this case, the two sizes. Yeah, and they're so pretty. It really was one of my favorite beads in the box. So it was it was an easy pick to use. Thank you, Colleen, and the whole Sarah yeah. and you, and Jesse, thanks for helping out today. Absolutely. Could not do it without them. They keep uh, they keep us uh, in work and order here. They do for sure. So you're getting the the earrings to the stage where I declare earring is done when it's in this form. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think earrings need an earwire to be earrings. <laughs> to be finished earrings. <laughs> but they do because you can't wear them without the. <laughs> but somehow getting to this stage is feels like I have completed them. Oh my gosh, those are so pretty. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I do have two ear wires real quick, real quick. I honestly want to make my own ear wires later, but I do have these that I can add just really quickly so that I've got something. But I'm sure I have that opinion because my ears aren't pierced, so I don't need to, to get them to the next <laughs> Right, because you're not going to just, like, try them on immediately, right? No, it's like, no, I made a fun project. I'm done. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I think I have a whole tray of actually earrings behind me that are... That don't have ear wires? Yeah. <laughs> you don't need them. Who I made them probably wires? five years ago. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn you guys around. <laughs> Too funny. You don't need no stinking ear wires. <laughs> so pretty those are. Gosh, I love, I love the little shimmery, the golden <sighs> shimmer on that green. They're just perfect. They're oh, yep. 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 These are good. <laughs> you done good, Sam and Nile. You really did. Those are so pretty. pretty. And then I have a fabulous bracelet to match. Let's see. And I love memory wire. I need to use more memory wire. It's just so easy. It's so easy and so fun. And I got the little dangles so I can walk around and cha-cha <laughs> all day. And... <laughs> And it's just a beautiful three-strand bracelet that's just easy to wear. You just throw it on. You don't have to worry about a clasp or anything. Yeah. And you have the cute little earrings to match it. And I have a whole world of beads left over to make other necklaces and more bracelets and rings. And this box was just jam full of amazingness. So thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Neela. You guys were awesome. You did an amazing box. It's so thank pretty. Thank you so much. And thank you for making these beautiful pieces to inspire us. Yeah. Love, love, love. So nice. So nice. I love that you still squeezed in the earrings. Yeah. <laughs> What's on your door these days? Oh my goodness. It is a, so I got it that for my birthday. It would help if I got out of the way. It's 100 horror movies and it's a scratch off so you scratch off and it tells you a movie and you the goal is to scratch off the entire thing i've only scratched off one two three four five six so far but yeah you, so, and you watch them together yeah so it's just kind of a fun thing to do during the halloween season but what's cool is that they have different ones there's like 100 comedies 100 romances 100 musicals like you can get it for any genre which i um, think is really cool so we're doing the horror one for spooky season but then i i want the christmas one so that i can do 100 <laughs> christmas movies because i i'm all about the christmas movies too so yeah i think it'll be fun but it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. That's and I had good. to hang it back there because I kept having it, you know, just rolled up like posters. But, you know, then I would forget about it. So I was like, I'll just hang it up. And then that way we'll remember to scratch yeah. off a movie to go watch when we don't know what else that's to fun. do. <laughs> yeah. I, that's a really fun idea. Yeah. And it's a great date night that's super cheap. You know, I mean, pop some popcorn and you're, you're good to go. Scratch off a movie. Done. <laughs> that's, I really like that. Yeah. It's cool. 
Wanda says Sam needs one that's Broadway shows. You do. Yes, you do. Because they they only really have so many filmed or movie versions. I wonder how they would even get to a hundred. I don't know. That's what I wonder about the Christmas ones too. But then I think like I wonder if like Hallmark movies count because there's definitely like thousands of those. There's a you know? lot. There's a lot. Also, there's like <laughs> movies that are like somewhat Christmas. Yeah. I think I think they'll come up with plenty, honestly, for that season. Yeah, probably. Probably. If they were trying to do like a hundred Hanukkah movies, there wouldn't be anything to scratch off. <laughs> few hallmark there's does few. hanukkah movies too so yeah there's there's gotta be there's gotta be a few <laughs> has to be <laughs> oh my goodness oh, thank you sam this was so much fun as always i love getting to hang out with you and i always love getting to go through your beatbox it's amazing guys don't forget about the coupon code you can mm -hmm. use um and don't forget to check out the live sale tonight because you mentioned it's expanding this color palette. So mm -hmm. I'm intrigued for sure. Got some more Kumbaba Jasper and some Ocean Jasper. Gosh, what else did I prep yesterday? There's lots of pretties. And then Rachel has so many pretties. So definitely mark your calendar for five o'clock. Excuse me, for five o'clock today. Yes, yes. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. And Hardwired, we're meeting at 4 p.m. Eastern time, just like always, for our weekly project this week. Um, and just a quick reminder, there will be a, um, a post so that you guys don't forget. Nicole's going to post that up for everybody just as a quick little reminder. But there is no um, Feel Good Friday show this week because I will be teaching. But uh, I'll be back next week and my schedule will be right back to normal again. So you won't miss me too much, I don't think. We're going to miss you a lot. <laughs> this is one Friday. And actually, my Master Maker show for Friday is still going on. It's just pre-recorded. So Okay. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's it. I don't like this part of the show. <laughs> this is the part where we have to say goodbye, and I'm not good at that part. <laughs> I, 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 I get it. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, we are going to say goodbye though. We love all of you. Thanks for hanging out with us and uh, we will see you guys soon. Right? Yeah. I'll all see right. y'all tonight. Bye guys. Bye everyone.